top on to question two. So they say we've got a table uh, below that represents eight organic compounds. Okay, so quickly let's have a look at the questions that are given, right? They say use the table above uh, to answer the following questions, right? Um, they say to us define the term homologous series. So remember that when we talk about a, a homologous series, it's a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula, right? Or in this case, we can say that it is a series of organic compounds in which one member differs from the next with a CH2 group, okay? Right, so any of those uh, would work, right? So they say consider the organic compound G, uh, so that is G. Um, so that looks like uh, that is going to be ether, I mean, uh, uh, a buta, a butanal, right? C double bond O with an H there. They say write down the homologous series to which this compound belongs. Right, so that is definitely an aldehyde. So that is an aldehyde. Okay, and secondly, they say write down the condensed structural formula uh, for this compound. Now note, in this case, uh, what you can do is I can write it in, in, in the, uh, the other way around. So that would be CH3, CH2, CH2, and CHO. So I can write it in this way, CH3, CH2, CH2 and CHO, right? That's that's the condensed form of it. If you wanted to write in, uh, write it in this in the same order. Uh, I'd say CHO, CH two, CH two, CH three. I just prefer this order uh, most of the time. Okay, so for that CHO at the end. Um, and uh, by the way, this can sometimes be a little bit disturbing. So uh, so perhaps it's better also to write it in that, in that manner. Uh, but yeah, I think I would actually prefer the first one. Okay, right. So let's go on to the next question. They say write down the IUPAC name of the functional isomer of G. Now note that uh, aldehydes and um, ketones are functional isomers of each other. So let's find a ketone there. Okay, and it must be a ketone with four carbons. Um, so uh, which one is it? Uh, so that would be penta. Okay, so no, that can't be pentan one own. Um, okay, so I, all right, so it looks like I've got a methyl propanoate there. Uh, are we still talking about uh, compound G? Write down the IUPAC name of the functional isomer. Oh, so we're not finding it from the, from the list there. All right, so the functional isomer, apologies about that. Uh, so the functional isomer of that guy would be, uh, let's say that would be butane, uh, butane to own, all right? So please note, it would be a ketone that has a double bond, uh, uh, the double bond O sitting anywhere else except the terminal carbon. So whether... Um, uh, it must be the two other carbons. So in that case, it means that uh, it would be two either way, right? So that's butane two own. All right, so apologies about that. I thought they were saying it must be in that list. Okay, right. So the next question, they say, write down the IUPAC name of compound H. So if I look at uh, there, okay, compound H. So firstly, let's look at what would be the longest carbon chain there? Um, so it looks like it is five uh, straight chains. Okay, so um, in this case, I've got I've got uh, methyl side chains, 
right in carbon number one and carbon number uh, in carbon number two rather okay so i've got a two there but if i look at that i also have bromides okay and the first one would be at carbon number uh, two and the other one at carbon number three okay right but now uh, i see that i've got these side chains of mine there okay and uh, notice so where am i going to start numbering from okay well i'm going to actually start numbering from uh, the left hand side okay so I'm going to start numbering from my left hand side and say, well, this is carbon number one. Uh, that's two, that's three, four and five. OK, so. Um, and by the way, the jury is still out on, on, on this. It, it still remains one of the arguing points. Uh, but uh, in the CAPS curriculum, uh, they actually choose uh, the methyl in this case as, as, as uh, the ones that would take precedence. OK, so as a result, that's why I'm choosing that option. Uh, I know some of you uh, may have referred to my video. OK, and the IUPAC name, I mean, the IUPAC says something different. And in the CAPS curriculum, they seem to accept something different. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I will, uh, you know, for the sake of the max, uh, let's do what the CAPS curriculum says. Right. So this is going to be at carbon number uh, two. All right, so we've got 3,4. Uh, firstly, dibromo. Okay, so that's dibromo. Um, and we've got carbon number 2,2. Two. All right, that's dimethyl. So that would be 2,2 that two. dimethyl. Okay, and finally, we've got uh, pent there. So that would be pentane. Sorry, I can't fit all of that uh, in one line. So that would be 3,4 dibromo, uh, 2,4, uh, 2,2 dimethyl uh, pentane. All right, so I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. All right, let's go to the next portion. They say the general formula of the homologa series to which compound A belongs. Right, so if you look at compound A, let's go to compound A. So you've got C double bond O with an OH. So that definitely belongs to carboxylic acids. And that's what we wanted to find. But they said we must uh, find the general formula. Right, so remember carboxylic acids, we can write it as CnH2NO2. Right. Um, another way of writing that down uh, is CnH2n plus one and you've got COOH. You can refer to my videos on uh, organic chemistry and you'll see that's exactly what we uh, apply there. Right. On the next one, they say write down the letters of the compounds that represents. Right. So firstly, they say. Uh, the positional isomer um of the positional isomers rather okay okay so let's see uh, which ones uh represent okay so they are not specific on which ones are uh, positional isomers okay so we need to find them okay so firstly i see we've got uh, remember that uh, when we're looking at positional isomers Right, which is which is what they are interested in there. They must have the same uh, homologous. Uh, they must be from the same homologous series, right? Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, positional isomers. Uh, I've got butane two all there. Do I have anyone that is an alcohol? No. Well, uh, yeah, that's not a positional isomer. Um, so if I look at it, I've got pentane 2 on. Uh, let's see, do we have another ketone there? Um, okay, let's see. I've, I do have a ketone. This is definitely a ketone. Okay, uh, it's got a C double bond O. 
um, and it's got five carbons. Yeah, it looks like it's C and D, right? So C and D are uh, positional isomers. This would have, now note, this would have um, our, the double bond O at carbon number three, right? So whereas the other one had at carbon number two. So definitely C and D are positional isomers of each other. Okay, I don't suppose that there are any others. Um, no. All right. Okay. Right. It looks like C and D is our only option. Right. And then they say um, the letter that represents an ester. Okay. So which one is our ester there? So definitely F is an ester. Uh, we don't have any other ester. So we've got uh, F as the one there. Right, they say consider the organic compound B. So let's go to compound B. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got two methyl butane to all. All right. Okay, so uh, two methyl butane to all. Uh, they say to us write down the structural formula. So please remember, ladies and gents, uh, two methyl butane to all. That means that I'm going to find uh, to start with the parent chain. So that's but. Okay. So at carbon number two, I've got an all, which is OH. But at carbon number two, I also have a uh, methyl, right? So I'd have CH3. I just don't have enough space there. Okay, so this is what it would look like. Carbon number two, I'd have an OH, but I'd also have CH3 there. Okay, and please, you must uh, insert all your hydrogens uh, because otherwise the structure becomes incorrect. Okay, right, so this is what it would look like. And uh, nothing wrong if you decided to put your um your hydrogen your hydroxide rather as oh like this okay nothing uh, absolutely in uh, incorrect with that so that is correct right now they want us to find out is uh, is compound b a primary secondary or a tertiary alcohol now note the carbon that has the functional group has got one two and three carbons surrounding it so it is definitely a tertiary alcohol right and then finally before we get to the last question they say ex explain the answer to 2.5.2 uh, well uh, i've just said it just now right so there are three carbons that are bonded to the carbon atom which has the hydroxide ion okay right so and that is how you're going to explain that part. All right, now let's go on to the calculation. They say hydrocarbons are the principal constituents of petroleum and natural gas, right? A, hyd a hydrocarbon consists of 81.82 carbon, 18.18 uh, hydrogen. And they want us to calculate the empirical formula of this hydrocarbon all right now please i want you to note ladies and gents so what i usually do um i'll just write that as a table okay so i know it is a hydrocarbon so that means we've got carbon we've got hydrogen right so we first convert the percentages into mass okay so what I'm going to do there is that uh, this represents 81.82 grams, okay? And 18.18 uh, 18 uh, grams, right? Now, if I accept that the, that represents the mass, then we go to our periodic table. The molar mass of carbon, okay, is 12. And the molar mass of uh, hydrogen 
we know this is one if we check in our periodic table right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use number of moles is mass divided by molar mass so that's 81.82 divided by for carbon that is 12 and the same is true for hydrogen so 18.18 divided by the molar mass, which is 1. All right, so let's uh, calculate that. So we've got 81.82 divided by 12. Okay, that gives me 6.82. Okay, so I'm going to leave that as 6.82. And 18.18, that gives me 18.18. All right, so what I'm going to do, ladies and gents, what you do is you now divide by the smallest number, okay? So the smallest number between the two is definitely uh, 6.82, right? So I'm going to divide by 6.82 on both. Remember, what I'm trying to do is to get a ratio. So 6.82, okay, so let's do that. Um, so that gives me one, okay? <clears throat> and for hydrogen, uh, that's 18.18 divided by 6.82. Um, uh, that gives me uh, 2.67, okay? So that would be 2.67. Uh, right, now remember... In this case, uh, if, if you take it as 2.67 and you write it as a ratio, right? So, uh, remember, what happens now is that I can't have this, uh, you can't have, you know, a uh, decimal as or, or even a fraction uh, for your number of moles, right? So, what we then need to do, uh, if we express it as a ratio, so this is going to be 2, and 2 over 3, right? Or in this case now, uh, that's 2 and 2 over 3. That's 2.67, uh, right? But now, what can I do? Let's write it as a fraction. So that means that, uh, remember, as a fraction, that's 3 times 2, which is uh, 6. So that's 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 2, which gives me... Uh, eight. So this is 8 over 3. Now, ladies and gents, uh, to make that, uh, it must not be a fraction, which means I need to multiply both by the LCD. So I multiply that by 3, but what I do on the one, I have to do on the other, right? So I've, I'll have carbon, which is 3, and of course that cancels with that, and so hydrogen would be 8. So which means the empirical formula uh, of my uh, hydrocarbon should be C3H8. All right, so that is how we are going to get uh, to that answer. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, we're going to move on to question three.